after studying this module students will be able to learn briefly about the external commercial borrowings and revise guidelines regulating ECBs to learn about the revision in the guidelines related to the external commercial borrowings in India to learn briefly about the foreign currency convertible bonds We shall commence this module by studying about the external commercial borrowings and FCCB. The world where we are living today is widely different from the world which was 2-3 years decades ago. We are no more claiming our world to be elliptical rather claiming it to be flat. Intense integration of economies at international platform and rapid pace of globalization have made the world flatter. Transfer of human capital, technology, financing abroad, etc. becomes seamless. An organization could fulfill its financial needs from internal earnings or by issuing the financial security like debt or equity in the domestic as well as the international markets. In the post-liberalization era, norms have been relaxed regarding raising capital from the non-resident lenders for domestic entity facing capital deficit. The problem of the limited domestic capital supply could be avoided from borrowing from the international lenders. External commercial borrowings and FCCBs foreign currency convertible bonds are one of the instrument to raise funds from the non-resident lenders for the domestic companies. In India external commercial borrowings and the trade credits availed of by residents are administered by the clause D of the subsection 3 of section 6 of the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999 read with the notification number FEMA 3 oblique 2000 RB with foreign exchange management borrowing or lending in the foreign exchange regulations 2000 dated May 3rd 2000 as amended from time to time. Let us now discuss the external commercial borrowings. The Reserve Bank of India defines external commercial borrowings, borrowings as follows. External commercial borrowings ECBs. ECBs denote two commercial loans in the method of bank loans. Securitized instruments example floating rate notes and the fixed rate bonds non-convertible, optionally exchangeable or partly convertible preference shares. Buyer's credit, supplier's credit availed of from the non-resident mortgages with at least average maturity of the three years. External commercial borrowings include commercial bank loans, buyer's credit, supplier's credit, securitized instruments such as fixed rate bonds, credit from official credit export agency etc. raised from the international lenders who are non-resident to the domestic economy like insurance funds, pension funds, international bank registered in the foreign lands, multi-dimensional financial institutions like International Finance Corporation, Asian Development Bank, etc. Why companies borrow from the non-resident lenders? The logic is quite simple. Limited capital supply from the domestic lenders and the credit offered by the foreign lenders is cheaper than the domestic lenders. Moving on to the foreign currency convertible bonds, RBI defines FCCB as bond allotted by an Indian company communicated in the foreign currency and the principal and interest regarding which are payable in the foreign currency. The bonds are compulsory to be issued in the agreement with the scheme like issue of the foreign currency convertible bonds and ordinary share through depository receipt mechanism scheme 1993 and contributed by a non-resident in the foreign currency and exchangeable into the normal shares of issuing company in any way either in whole or partly on the basis of equity associated warranties attached to debt instruments. FCCBs are administered by the issue of foreign currency convertible bonds and ordinary shares through depository receipt mechanism scheme 1993 as amended from time to time and the notic notification FEMA number 120 oblique RB 2004 dated 7th July 2004. 
the issuance of FCCBs was brought under the ECB guidelines in August 2005. Additionally, to the necessities of having the maturity of the FCCBs not less than 5 years, the call and put option, if any, shall not be excisable prior to 5 years. Issuance of FCCBs only without any warranty attached. The issue related expenses not more than 4% of issue size and in case of private pl placement shall not exceed 2% of issue size, etc. As mandatory in terms of notification FEMA number 120 oblique RB 2004 dated 7th July 2004, FCCBs are also subject to all the regulations which are applicable to ECBs. The convertible part of FCCB makes it a quasi-debt instrument as the FCCB's holder possess the right to convert the bonds into the equity share of the company. It gives taste of both bond and share. FCCB's give an opportunity to raise capital from foreign lenders in the foreign currency. FCCB's gives advantage to both issuer and lender. Issuer gets access to the foreign capital at the lower rate of interest and the lender gets fixed periodical coupon payments and capital gains from the appreciation in the share price. Like any other bond, FCCBs offer coupon rate, but the coupon rates are normally very low because the lenders are most of the time interested in the capital gain from the conversion bonds to equity. Hence, it is not surprising that FCCBs offer very low coupon rate. The coupon payment is made by the issuing entity to the bond holders on periodic intervals. The holder of the bonds possesses the option to convert the bonds into equity. Rationally, the FCCB's holder would exercise the conversion right when they make decent capital gain, otherwise ask for redemption. Conversion of the bonds to equity has to be completed in the stipulated time frame in accordance with the terms and conditions of the issue. If the bond holder choose to convert the FCCBs, then the holder would receive the shares of the issuing company at redetermined rate or at the rate determined when the FCCBs were subscribed. The conversion price normally adds some premium over the market price prevailing at the time of issue. Let us now understand the foreign currency exchangeable bonds. RBI describes FCEBs as the bond uttered in the foreign currency, the principal and the interest regarding which are payable in the foreign currency, distributed by an issuing company and contributed to by a person who is resident outside India in the foreign currency and transferable into equity share of the another company to be termed as the offered company in any manner either entirely or partly or on the basis of any equity related warrants committed to debt instruments. Eligible issuer The issuing company shall be a part of the organizing group of the offered company and intend to hold the equity shares being obtainable at the time of issue of FCEB. Offered company. The offered company intend to be a listed company which is involved in a sector suitable to receive foreign direct investment and qualified to issue foreign currency convertible bond or external commercial borrowings. The FCEB must comply with the issue of foreign currency exchangeable bonds scheme 2008 informed by the government of India, Ministry of Finance, Department of Economic Affairs via the notification GSR 89E dated February 15, 2008. The guidelines, rules, etc. governing ECBs are also relevant to FCEBs. There is a little difference between FCCBs and FCEBs. In FCCBs, the bonds would be converted into stock or shares of issuing company. On the other hand, FCEBs are issued by the holding company of a group, hence provided the option of the exchangeability of the share in the group's subsidiary as mentioned in the issue documents. Hence, 
FCCBs involve only one company but FCEBs involve at least two companies. How ECB and FCCBs are issued to raise capital by the companies in India? Who are the eligible borrowers? Who are the eligible non-resident lenders? What are the purpose of the issue? How payment has to be made etc. have to be in compliance with FEMA 1998 and regulations or notifications issued by RBI in consultation with the Department of Economic Affairs, Ministry of Finance time to time. There are two route raise foreign capital, automatic route and approval route. Automatic route, raising ECBs under the involuntary route does not require government or RBI approval. The following are the eligible borrowers of ECBs under the automatic route. A corporate comprising those in hotels, hospitals, software sectors recorded under Companies Act, non-banking financial companies, infrastructure financial companies, NBFCs, asset finance companies, small industry development bank of India, units in the special economic zone, NBFCs, IFCs are allowed to avail of the ESPs for on lending to the infrastructure sector distinct under ECB policy. NBFCs, AFCs are permitted to avail ECBs for financing the import of the infrastructure equipment for leasing to infrastructure projects. Non-government organizations engaged in the microfinance activities are eligible to avail the ECBs. Microfinance institutions involved in the microfinance activities are eligible to avail ECBs. Who are not eligible borrowers under automatic route? Banks including cooperative banks, other financial institutions, individuals and non-corporates, NBFC, housing finance companies other than specially allowed by RBI will not be qualified to raise ECB. Recognized lenders. Non-resident lenders who could lend to eligible borrowers under ECBs, international banks, international capital markets, multilateral financial institutions such as the IFC and ADB etc. Regional financial institutions and government owned development financial institutions, export credit agencies, supplier of the equipment, foreign equity holders, recent addition to the lender list as per the new draft framework are as under. Overseas regulated financial entities, pension funds, insurance funds, sovereign wealth funds and similar long-term investors amount and maturity there have been some changes in the amount and maturity period for ecb as per the new draft framework minimum average maturity of three years for ecb up to us dollar 50 million or equivalent previously up to 20 million us dollar or equivalent minimum average maturity of five years for ecb above us dollar 50 million previously above 20 million US dollars. End use. The ECB's regulation also prescribed the purpose for which an entity could raise the ECB. There are some specific purposes for which uses of ECB capital is permitted. There are some activities for the utilization of ECB capital is prohibited under the regulation. Proceed raised through issue of ECBs could be utilized by the corporation for the following purposes as permitted under the regulation. Capital expenditure, modernization, expansion, import of capital goods, etc. Working capital or repayment of the rupee loan which conditions prescribed in the regulation. Recent addition of the purpose for which ECB proceed could be utilized to repay trade credit taken for the period up to three years for capital expenditure for payment in the direction of the capital goods already shipped or imported but not paid purchase of second hand domestic capital goods plant and machinery on lending to infra special purpose vehicles overseas direct investment in the joint venture wholly owned subsidiaries by the core investment companies coming under the regulatory framework of RPI for on lending to infrastructure sector and for import and or 
domestic acquisition of the equipment for the pers persistence of the gimmick the same on the higher purchase as loan against the hypothetication of hiring to the infrastructure sector by all NBFCs subject to the minimum of 75% hedging. Likewise, for the following purposes, proceeds of ECB could not be utilized by the entity. Real estate activities other than the expansion of integrated township reasonable housing projects. Investing in the capital market and using the earnings for the equity investment domestically. Activities forbidden as per FDI guidelines. On lending to additional entities with any of the above objectives. Purchase of land. Guarantees. Issue of guarantee. Standby letter of credit. Letter of undertaking or letter of comfort by banks, financial institutions and non-banking financial companies from India relating to ECB is not permitted. Security. The choice of security to be providing to the external lender or supplier for acquiring ECB is left to the borrower. AD category 1. Banks may allow construction of charge on the immovable assets, movable assets, financial securities and issue of corporate and or personal guarantees all for the overseas lender or security trustee to save the ECB to be raised up or raised by the mortgager subject to satisfying themselves that the fundamental ECB is in agreement with the existing ECB guidelines. There exists a security clause in the loan agreement necessitating the ECB borrower to create charge in favor of the foreign country lender security trustee on the fixed asset or the movable asset, financial security, issuance of the corporate and or the personal guarantee, no objection certificate wherever necessary from the present lender in India has been obtained. Parking of ECB proceeds. Borrowers have the choice to keep ECB proceeds away these funds to India. Inadequate utilization for all allowable end uses. ECB proceeds parked overseas. These funds can be spent in the next liquid assets, deposit or certificate of deposit or other products offered by the bank rated not less than AA- by Standard & Poor or AA3 by Moody's. Treasury bills and the other financial instruments of one year maturity having minimum rating as indicated above. Deposits with the overseas branches, subsidiaries of Indian banks abroad, the funds should be invested in such a way that the investment can be liquidated as and when funds are required by the borrowers in India. ECB proceeds raised abroad meant for rupee expenditure in India. Funds meant for the local sourcing of the capital goods on lending to self-help groups or for micro-credit payment for spectrum allocation, repayment of rupee loan availed from the domestic banks etc. should be repatriated immediately for credit to their rupee account with AD category 1 banks in India. ECB borrowers are also allowable to park ECB taking in term deposit with AD category 1 banks in India for maximum period of 6 months unresolved utilization subject to conditions. The rupee fund though will not be allowable to be used for the investment in the capital markets, real estate or for the inter-corporate lending. The primary accountability to ensure that ECB proceeds meant for the rupee expenditure in India are repatriated to India is that of the borrower concerned and any contravention of the ECB guidelines will be viewed seriously and will invite penal action under the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. The primary accountability to make sure that the ECB takings meant for the rupee expenditure in India are deported to India is that of the borrower apprehensive and any violation of the ECB guidelines will be viewed extremely and will offer penal action under the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. The elected AD bank is also requisite to ensure 
the ecb continues meant for the rupee expenditure are sent back to the india directly after drawdown prepayment prepayment of ecb up to us dollar 500 million may be allowed by ad banks without prior approval of reserve bank subject to obedience with the specified minimum average maturity period as applicable to the loan refinancing of an existing ecb the present ecb whether raised up under the automatic route may be refinanced by rising a fresh ecb subject to the condition that the fresh ecb is raised up to a lower all in cost the remaining maturity of the original ecb is not condensed that is remaining maturity of the existing ecb is either maintained the quantity of the fresh ecb is qualified to be raised up under the automatic route further such refinance is not allowable by raising fresh ecb from overseas branches subsidiaries of indian bank debt servicing the selected ad bank has the overall permission to make allowances of the investment of principal interest and other charges in conventionality with ecb guidelines issued by the government or reserve bank of india from time to time corporates under investigation all entities contrary to which investigations or adjudications or applications by the law administering agencies are undecided may avail of ecb as per the current norms if they are then eligible all the same the pending investigations or the adjudications or applications without prejudice to the consequence of such investigations adjudications and applications accordingly in the case of all applications where the borrowing article has directed about the pending investigations or adjudications or applications authorized dealer while admiring the proposal shall familiar the concerned agency by recommending the copy of the approval letter procedure borrowers may go into the loan agreement conforming to the ecb guidelines with the acknowledged lender for raising ecb under the automatic route without the previous approval of the reserve bank the mortgager must obtain a loan registered number from the reserve bank of india before drawing down the ecb approval route in the approval route of the raising ecb formal approval has to be taken from rbi rest of the conditions are nearly similar with some variations procedure applicants are necessary to give in to an application in form ecb through designated ad bank to the principal chief journal manager foreign exchange department reserve bank of india central office external commercial borrowing division mumbai 400001 along with the necessary documents reserve bank of india has set up an empowered committee to study proposal under the approval route let us recapitulate what we have learned so far ecb denote two commercial loans in the method of bank loans securitized instrument example floating rate notes and fixed rate bonds non convertible optionally exchangeable or partly convertible preference shares buyers credit suppliers credit avail of from non resident mortgages with a minimum average maturity of 3 years rbi defines fccb as a bond allotted by the indian company communicated in the foreign currency and the principal and interest regarding which are payable in the foreign currency the offered company intend to be a listed company which is involved in a sector suitable to receive foreign direct investment and qualified to issue of foreign currency convertible bonds or external commercial borrowings